When looking at the world today, there's no doubt that the internet has transformed society. Every day we're online from the moment we wake up and reach for our phones until the moment we go to bed taking the phones with us. We talk with our friends, pay our bills, search for information, book our flights, file our taxes. Everything online. On the internet, any person with a desire to develop something new, even if deemed idiotic or impossible, has the freedom to do so. If it turns out to be useful and people like it, it'll start growing. If it turns out to be idiotic or impossible, it dies. This evolutionary process, created by the openness of the internet, has driven innovation and given us services that we use every day. Email, Facebook, Google, Snapchat, YouTube, services, making our lives easier, giving us the freedom to share information and communicate with anyone in the world. This talk, for instance, will be available to anyone, anywhere and at any time, all thanks to the openness of the internet. But is everything really as open and free as we like to think? For a long time, I viewed the internet only as this great democratizing and liberating force. And why wouldn't I? Being privileged in a privileged country, the internet has always been open to me, letting me do what I want, like uh, watching cat videos. It wasn't until Bitcoin caught my interest and brought me into new corners of the internet, I understood how naive I had been. Sure, there were some cat videos in these corners too, but more importantly, there were people talking about the dark side of the internet. Not the dark net, but the fact that the free and open internet is being turned into a machine for surveillance, censorship and control by middlemen. Huge centralized service providers like Facebook, Google, Amazon and all the other companies that we blindly trust every time we go online, often without even knowing it. I like to call these middlemen the spiders of the internet, because like all spiders, they control the web. Nothing happens in a spider's web without the spider knowing. Not too long ago, I bought some running shoes. Since then, all the web pages I have visited have been full of sport gear commercials. On the surface, this looks innocent enough, Sure, it's a bit annoying, but hey, it's a lot better than the penis extension pop-ups I used to get. <laughs> but this development is anything but innocent. To give me the sport care commercials, my personal information had to be collected and connected by someone, the spider. Every time I buy something, Amazon knows. Every time I search for something, Google knows. And every time I share something, Facebook knows. I can barely do anything without some middleman paying attention, taking notes. The news I read, the books I buy, the conversations I have are all used to build a complete profile of me. A profile sold to those who want to tailor their marketing and change my behavior. Make me buy this or make me think that. Billions of dollars are spent collecting this personal information. And the scary part is that it works. Evidence suggests, for instance, that tailored political commercials, based on user data from sources like Facebook, tilted the elections in favor of both Brexit and Trump. What we're now facing is not only an invasion of our privacy, but also a direct threat to our freedom of speech and information. The spiders have poisoned the internet, sitting in the middle, monitoring everything, controlling everything. The Facebook spider suppresses conservative news and censors what it deems inappropriate. Be it the photo of the Napalm girl from the Vietnam War, or the writings of a policy winning reporter exposing the government of Malta. The Google spider has a right-wing bias, blocks millions of web pages, and shows us different search results depending on who we are and where we are. These spiders might have good intentions, but who gave them the power to decide in the first place? Well, we did, not because we wanted to, but because the only choice we were given was to accept the terms and conditions and embrace the digital society or become analog outcasts. Luckily for us, this trade-off might disappear. Someone has invented an antidote, removing the spider's power while leaving the web intact, a new technology making it possible to develop a digital society 
uh, in which you don't have to accept terms and conditions to be a part. It is called the blockchain. To understand what the blockchain is all about, you don't have to be an expert in cryptography, data science, or economics. The only thing you really need to know is that it is a technology supporting an open and general network for exchange of value, a technology taking the management of digital assets away from the middlemen, the spiders, and putting it where it belongs, in the hands of the individual. In this context, it's important to be aware that the term digital asset means much more than just money or financial papers. It includes things like contracts and intellectual property, such as music and art. It even includes more abstract forms of assets, such as user data, identity, and vote. The internet emerged as an open platform for the exchange of information, information you spread by sending out copies. What has been missing is an open system for exchange of value, information that must have a digital owner and be impossible to duplicate. The blockchain fills this gap. Without the blockchain, all online services involving the management of digital assets, ranging from payments to user data, have to be built around trusted third parties, paving the way for internet spiders. Let's take an example. Uber. Why does my booking of a driver go through a private company which builds a profile on me and uses its position as an intermediator to log my movement by storing when I go and where, even after I close the app? Why can't someone just set up an open system matching those who need a ride with available drivers, a system where only necessary information is exchanged and only between those who need information, the passenger and the driver? Well, such a system would require the management of digital assets. The payment is the obvious one. Uber handles the payment from the passenger and ensures that the driver gets paid after they take a cut, of course. In addition, Uber owns and manages the digital identities of both the passenger and the driver, ensuring the two parties that the other is who he claims to be. With the internet as your only building block, you either accept that Uber collects your data or you buy a bike. With a blockchain, this all changes. Remember that blockchain is an open system for exchange of value, meaning that you can set up a system where only necessary information is exchanged and only between those who need information. A system where the user, and not Uber, control both the payment and the digital identities, securing the privacy of the user while facilitating the smoothness of app-based taxi booking. We already see several projects working toward this goal, undermining internet spiders like Uber by building the services atop of the open blockchains, such as Bitcoin and Ethereum. Of course, the spiders will also try to reap the benefits of this new technology. And most of them think they can do it by using the technology behind Bitcoin to develop permissioned blockchains or private blockchains. But they will fail. The power of the blockchain is not as much in its technical details as it is in its open implementation. And by taking away the openness, you take away the innovation, repeating the mistake of those who focused on developing closed intranets in the 90s. On the blockchain, any person with the desire to develop something new, even if deemed idiotic or impossible, has the freedom to do so. If it turns out to be useful and people like it, it'll start growing. If it turns out to be idiotic or impossible, it dies. This evolutionary process, created by the openness of the blockchain, will drive innovation and give us digital services that we will use every day. We already see thousands of projects being built atop of the open blockchains, projects targeting one internet spider at a time, developing a digital society without middlemen, putting control in the hands of the user, internet banking without a bank, social media without a Facebook, online markets without an Amazon, taxi booking without an Uber. And for each spider that gets killed by the blockchain, we'll gain a little freedom. Freedom from having our personal data collected, connected, and sold. Freedom for a taxi driver to set his own price. 
an artist to distribute her own music, a journalist to share his writings, a programmer to test her ideas, all without needing the permission from a middleman. The internet forms the foundation of our digital society. The blockchain makes sure this society does not become a dictatorship. <laughs>